So you have the annotations. Annotations of the declaration. You're going to be coming around to check on your progress. I'm looking to see that you're making annotations. Yeah, you can use a highlighter. And then I expect you to be answering the questions once you've made your annotations. Now we've already looked at part of this document before, so it should be fairly familiar to you. I expect to see annotations, and I expect to see that you have started to answer the questions. We're about halfway through. And by this point, you should have at least annotated and answered some of the questions by this point.
right, we're going to go through. Some of these should have been incredibly easy for you to answer. Some of them might have been a little bit harder. And I'm a little concerned that some of you are waiting for answers to come your way. Okay? But I was really impressed with those of you that are getting better with your annotations. So, let's start with our number one. What document is it? Demetrius. Uh, Declaration. <laughs> the, the Declaration of the Independence. Of independence. Okay, Declaration of Independence. Okay, Declaration of Independence. Now, is that the only thing that you're being asked in number one? What else are you being asked in number one? Jamash. What is the purpose? Good. What is the purpose of this document? So what is the purpose of this document? Jamash, what's the purpose? Talk about the laws that are given. Um not quite. It does have to do a little bit with the laws, Delon? how people should have their own freedom. Good. It wants, it, it, they're stating that they they want... I'm sorry. Why am I hearing that? <clears throat> Why am I hearing that? That should go away. That they want to break from England I hear anyone's electronics again Dean Street comes in and confiscates them all you don't suck your teeth at me <laughs> I'm sorry, did we all gain dentures? You're not cute. Want to break from England? To gain natural because remember it's all about this idea of they have this the this inherent this natural freedom yes dear go ahead and get some water Dewan, do you have this on your paper? Uh, I would be digital. You have both the declaration and the purpose? Do you have declaration and the purpose? <laughs> All right, let's look at number two. What is the argument that's being made in this document? Dylan, what do you have? Uh, Biden back against England? Wait, what? Biden back against England? Um, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, we're, 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 I, I would go with that, fighting back. against 
we can abbreviate fighting back against uh, Great Britain or, or England um, to, for what purpose? Um, fight, fighting back against Great Britain. Um, Want to make sure that we don't miss anything. Yeah, uh, I, I would include to protect uh, colonies' rights. Okay. I tried to keep that one like as as simple as possible. What Let me turn this a little bit so that we're getting the answers here. Yes, dear. Uh you need that one repeated? Yeah. Okay. Fighting back against Great Britain to protect colonies' rights. Yes. I'll take a shot at question three. You can take a shot at number three. What do you think is the audience? The people of the United States. <laughs> Uh, they're not United States yet. Um, the people of the colonists? Yes. Um, we, we can put the, the, the colonies, and it's even greater than that. He specifically directs it towards mankind. Because he's not just directing it towards the colonies. It is, it is geared towards the colonies. But he wants it larger than that because he also wants this document to convince people beyond just the other colonists, beyond just that. Because he wants to convince people that are potentially allies, potentially people that will help them out as they go further. And maybe as they get uh, deeper into this conflict and lend them money or supplies. So this is also to convince people that their fighting is justified. So John, do you have this written down? All right, so we need at least two examples of references to either natural rights, self-rule, or enlightenment. So these would be things that we see in the reading that bring up these concepts. So what are some things that we saw in the reading that bring up these types of ideas? What did you see? Uh, life, virtue, and pursuit of happiness, I think. Okay, yeah. That, the, the specific quote of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's actually one of the that's one of them perfect we need one more sorry we need one more yeah all men are created equally okay i'll give you that all men are created equal. Okay. I'll give you that one. All men are created equal.
Now, the last question that we have for this particular assignment is asking us about tone. What kind of tone is Jefferson using? Is he talking soothingly to us? Uh, I don't know, but probably I think passionate. Okay, that's actually, that's a good way of putting it. Um, passionately, uh, do you have a planner? Just put it out on, on, on your desk and I'll oh, sign yeah, it I'll while, sign while, it. while you're, while you're gone. You don't have it? Okay. Go ahead and go. So passionately, passionately. Also, he's trying to, is he trying to like make us believe a certain thing? Not so much controlling, but he's trying to like. He he's he's trying to get us to. Follow. Okay, good. He he he's trying he's trying to be persuasive. He's trying to get us to see his his point of view, right? Yes. Oh. That um, passionately. Yes, passionately. P A S S I O N A T E L Y. Passionately. Passionately and persuasive. I'll move. So, passionately and persuasive. All right, my dears, I want you to pull out the document analysis sheet that you got on Friday. If you don't have it from Friday, it is directly behind Josiah on the bookshelf. Yes. So the document analysis sheet you got on Friday. If you don't have it, it's okay. It's behind Josiah on the bookshelf. Yes. Hmm? You gave it to me? Oh, passionately and persuasive. P-E-R-S-U-A-S-I-V-E. -E. Yes, which one? Of course you can move up. You can always move up. You never have to ask. Huh? Okay. If if we are taking notes and you can't see, just just move to where you can see. Uh, it's I gave them to you on Friday and then I had miscalculated the time. That that was my bad. Yes. Yes. Go right ahead. Stop it. Um. Just grab. Just grab a new one, love. Dewan, come on. Nobody needs you to go through an entire drill. I mean, well, it's a different group actually. Is anyone surprised? Yes. Uh-huh. So that means I do I have to get another? Sweetheart. What are you able to do the work right now? Dewan. Guys, stop 
with the nonsense. All right, so we're going to switch gears. We're going to look at our document analysis. Go on. So we always start with document analysis by looking at our source material, right? So first off, Remember, we start with our, our POV, our HC, our PUR, our AUD, and our significant statement, right? So let's start off by finding out our POV. So we're going to look at our document. Let me make sure that I adjust our camera so that we can see. So we've got our source, Howard Zinn, A People's History of the United States. So when we analyze this, we're going to put, we've got Howard Zinn. He's our source. So Howard Zinn. Howard Zinn, he is a historian. And this, oh, helps if I can spell. Historian, this is a secondary source. Remember, we talked about those being individuals that are experts in their field. You know, like uh, like textbook sources. Okay. Remember, we write this down. We don't play with their pencil. We write this down. Yes, dear. Is that an E and a G next to the um, R of sources? S O U R C E. All right. Thank you. Sec secondary source. <laughs> yes, baby. Uh, says Howard Zinn, H O W A R D, Zinn, Z I N N, historian, H I S T O R I A N. Second dairy source. You can put two little n d, then source s o u r c e. Guys, I need you to stay with me and stop with wandering off. Do you understand me? Okay. Let's look at historical context next. Where do we find historical context? Where do you think? Yes, dear. Well, before we get to the text, we still find that where? The date? Yeah, it's gonna have to do with the date. Come on. With the other classes, I make them do this on their own. Do you want to have to do this on your own? Okay, we can make it a test, that's fine. This behavior is not cute. 
I'm very disappointed in you guys today. Jaleel, move up here. Okay, so the year that this was written, it's 1980. Just, just put her, her book bag on the floor. When Tanya comes back, she'll, she'll just sit next to you. So this is during a period. This is during a period of history books being uh, reworked. Essentially, history textbooks are being re-examined for like bias, for um, having having things that that are in there that shouldn't be in there. Yes, dear. I mean, like censored. No, um, uh, essentially that they had had things that had been censored. Howard Zinn is part of the movement that was going back and going, "Hey, were there things?" that we're missing. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. Shh. The private conversations need to stop. Yes, dear. We're being reworked. All right, so, and part of the reason why we know that is that the title of his book is A People's History of the United States. Zinn is known as being one of the lead authors of the historians that were part of trying to help help in the process of finding out like the real history, not the hidden history uh, of uh, not, not hiding history in the United States. So let's go through the information that's in the, the text here. So it seemed clear to the educated upper class colonists that something needed to be done to persuade the lower class to join the revolutionary cause to direct their anger against England. Bless you. The solution was to find language inspiring all classes specific enough in its listing of grievances. What is grievances? What's a grievance? What do you think a grievance is? Item? No, it's not an item. Aaliyah. Is it like an agreement? Sort of? Uh, it would be the opposite of an agreement. A disagreement. A disagreement? Uh, like a complaint. A complaint Fortnite. or a fight. If I have a grievance against somebody, I am angry, upset, I have a genuine complaint against them. Okay? So if I have a grievance, I am upset, and I, like, I, I am unhappy about something. And it's unresolved. Okay? In, in, in most simplistic terms, I have beef with someone, and it, it, has, it is not 
it, it has not been been squashed. Okay, so we we have grievances, and these grievances have not been addressed. So we we need these specific list of grievances. So we need to get these people to know that there's specific things that they need to be upset about, but things that they can understand. It can't be like super complicated language that they're like, I don't, I don't get it. It has to be very specific language that they get to fill people with anger. They need to be angry with anger against the British, but vague, what does vague mean? Uh, like that hands, that hand is, is perfect. I'm trying. It, it, it was, it was the perfect hand gesture for vague. Uh, um, stable, unstable? No, no, not, not, not unstable, but. Visible? What, what's vague? What's vague? It, it's kind of... Stable? Avoid conflict or something? Hmm? Avoid conflict? Not so much avoid conflict, but... Uh, a little bit gray. A little bit gray, a little bit unclear. If something is vague, it's unclear. If I... If I don't have clear enough information about something, it's vague, okay? So I know I'm mad, but I don't know quite enough details about why I'm mad. I just know I'm mad. <laughs> no way. There's no way. Yes, dear. Can you do what? Uh, hang on to that thought for a second. So... Essentially, if you have an unclear situation, you have one where you have you have a situation where people are angry. They don't know why. So at this point in time, everybody's going to be silent. If it goes off again, I'm going to ask for time for anything directly to me. I'm going to take your phone. Very simply put. So if you have your phones on, now's the opportunity to put them on silent. And get the ear pods out. Zion, huh? ear pods, sir. If anyone else goes off, just send them straight out. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, dear. Uh, what time is it? Crazy, bro. It is 9.54, honey. Oh, okay. <laughs> If you have a vague enough situation where you don't have a specific reason why people are angry, but 
you have just enough people mad, you've created a situation where people are frenzied and pointed in a direction. And that, that was the idea. You've basically riled them up and pointed them in the direction that you wanted them to go. So everything in the Declaration of Independence was about popular control over the government. The right of rebellion and revolution, Dewan, I swear, you want to go? You want to go and have have your entire conversation about your brush over, honey? Fury at political tyranny. We talked about tyranny yesterday, or I'm sorry, on Friday. What was tyranny? What was tyranny, Delon? Do you remember? Huh? Taxes? Something? It wasn't taxes. What's tyranny? Do we remember? The colonists were super mad about tyranny. Demetrius, what do you think? It, it, that's one exercise of tyranny. Josiah, what do we remember tyranny to be? We saw it in the video on Friday. What's tyranny? They disrupt. Are you okay? They describe King George as being a tyrant. What's tyranny? Uh, a, a ruler with, yeah. yeah. Uh, a ruler with lots of power. Okay, ruling with total control and being a jerk. For lack of a better description, a ruler with total control and being a jerk about it. Okay? Think of it as being like a big man baby. Okay? Yeah, like, uh, like a boss baby. Okay? Somebody that doesn't allow anybody else to have any say in the situation. So people are mad, fury at political tyranny, economic burdens, you know, uh, financial troubles, and military attacks. Remember, at the time of the, the declaration, they had been fighting in a war for over a year. So they've been attacked for over a year as was well suited to unite large numbers of colonists and persuade even those who had grievances, again, that word grievances, against one another to turn against England. Some Americans were clearly omitted, left out, left out from those united by the Declaration of Independence. Who's he saying are left out? Who, who are the people that are left out in this declaration? Uh, Indians? Yeah. Indians Indian are Native Americans. Indian. And who else? Blacks. Blacks. Slaves and women. Yeah. Black slaves and women. Whoops. Jefferson leaves out the Native American population, leaves out blacks, leaves out women. You know over half the population. Whoops a daisy. You know, we talk about everyone's created equal. Do you have your planner? Go quickly. So that's why you said man? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's definitely some issues with the the way that this is written. So let's go through and answer our other components then. So what is our purpose 
with this document? What is, what is Zin trying to accomplish? Uh, Dimash. What do you, what do you think that he's he's what do you think that Howard Zinn is trying to do? Oh no 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 what what um the historian Howard Zinn what is he trying to do with with this Yeah he he's basically he's trying to he's trying to examine examine and explain the, and I'm going to abbreviate the declaration here, the Declaration of Independence. And I just have my notes on my phone because I forgot my paper. Um, and he wants to examine and explain the declaration. And he really wants to pay attention to what what was left out, right? So he wants to Pew. examine and explain the declaration Pew. and note who was left out. Who do you think was yes, dear? Uh, and note who was left out. <laughs> and note who was left out. So, Delon, who do you think is the audience for this? Uh, readers. Well, Wait, uh, it, it's a real simple one. If he is a historian, who's going to be his audience? Other historians. Good. Other historians. And? People. Colonists. All of us. Oh, students. And students. <laughs> historians and students. Historians and students, okay? It's a people's history of the United States. He's writing this for historians and students. That's the goal. That's the goal audience. <laughs> it's not at all noisy. All right. So when we look at the significant statement, why did colonists write the declaration? Colonists write the declaration because they wanted all the men to be equal, but they left some things out. So colonists wrote the declaration. Okay, so they wrote the Declaration of Independence to uh, I would say that, remember back here, they wanted to break with Great Britain, but they left out, they left out Indians, Blacks and women. And again, that's over half of the population. Okay? That's over half of the population in the United States that they leave out as not people. 
Okay. What are we doing? Let's go, let's go. So let's get that, that answer down, please and thank you. I would like to at least talk a little bit about the, the next document before we wrap up today. I don't know if we'll get through all of the analysis of the next document. So finish up your significant statement. It is 9.05, or I'm sorry, 10.05. Sorry, 10.05. So we have about nine minutes left. Now, you can already do the point of view on the next document because who is the author of the next document? Thomas it's Thomas Jefferson. Good. And what do we know about him? He makes the first draft of the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, he, he wrote the Declaration of Independence. He's also considered a founding father. So for the... The POV, you can go ahead and put Thomas Jefferson and that he's a founding father. So for the next document, while we're waiting for people to catch up, those of you that are ahead of the game, you can go ahead and put that in while we are waiting for people to catch up. All right. I'm going to give about 30 more seconds and then I'm going to switch documents. Uh, I guess people's grades. All right. Let's look at this excerpt. So we know that our, our person is Thomas Jefferson. and that he is a founding father. And for historical context, we know that this is uh, right before the Declaration of Independence was drafted. Okay? So, he has waged cruel war against nature itself. Who is, who is the he? That is King George the Third against human nature itself, violating its most sacred rights of life and liberty in the persons of a distant people who never offended him, captivating and carrying them 
into slavery in another hemisphere or to incur miserable death in their transportation thither. This piratical warfare. So he's referring to King George as a pirate. The op opium of infidel powers is the warfare of the Christian king of Great Britain. So he's basically, he's saying this monster, this horrible beast has snuck into the, the dens of other people's homes. He snatched people away in the night, taken them away and made them into slaves. Now, what's, what's kind of messed up about this? What do we know about Jefferson? Well, <laughs> where did Jefferson live? What state or what, what colony? Washington. Not Washington, no. further south. South of rocks. <laughs> Begins with a V. Virginia? Virginia. Does Virginia have slavery? No. Yeah. Jefferson had a lot of slaves on his massive plantation. Not only did he own slaves, but he had a 20 plus year relationship with a slave named Sally Hemings. Yes, relationship, like relationship, like relationship, <laughs> yes, relationship with <laughs> multiple children. Okay, <laughs> she like she she was his property. They had children. It's complicated. Oh, <laughs> Tremendously. It's super messed up. Yeah. Yeah. Now, mind you, he was married. And his wife just totally was like, I see nothing. Like, oh. the whole time, he did not free the slaves on his plantation. He did not, like and slavery but he's bitching about slavery <laughs> outside nah, of this man. Teacher, teacher, teacher so i want you to understand how this doesn't make sense he's owning teacher, slaves while he, he's owning slaves while saying that slavery is bad. Okay. It like what? Is it that it ever felt like people are today? They say that we would call like, this hypocrisy. <laughs> okay, this is hypocrisy. When you are doing something and actively pointing out that somebody else is doing the bad thing that you are doing and going, oh, it's real bad. The thing that you, oh, it's real bad. I'm doing it, but, oh. Okay? He's having a sexual relationship with a slave, having kids. Oh my God. And then at the same time saying King George, he he no. brought slavery <laughs> around the globe. No, like it's crazy. What? Yes. It's 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 oh, so buddy. messed up. It's so messed up. Like there are some that More you can fair. kind of blame on, like, oh, okay, they didn't understand the long term effects. I <sighs> Je right. Jefferson just straight up gives me a headache because, yes, 
did he do things that are worth remembering? Sure. This, this I have a problem with. Yes, dear. Question. Sure. Was, first off, was Thomas Edison related to Thomas yeah. Jefferson? No, because first names do not make you related. But, on a side note, Thomas Edison did some messed up stuff because he <laughs> is an animal killer. But that's for other days. Yes. No, because that's much later. But the amount of animals that he killed during his lifetime is disturbing. <laughs> Okay. All right. We're going to stop here because we have run out of time. I want I want both papers it's crazy, bro. on the table next to Josiah. Both papers. Names on them. Both papers. Names on them next to Josiah. Both papers. Names on them next to Josiah. Both papers next to Josiah.